Good morning, folks. Another day waiting for the sun to get active. Right now, we're just eyeing thin dark plasma filaments because those are the only chance for eruptions. Let's look at the sunspots, or lack thereof. This is keeping the solar flaring low, still just barely cracking into C range. And with the solar wind calming considerably as well, we now have a nice calm at both the sun and at Earth's magnetic field. But that's where the calm ends. While the sun's major uptick factor happens May 30th, we are now just 24 hours from Earth coming between Sun and Saturn, and as usual, the earthquakes have returned in a big way. Days and days without a 6 magnitude earthquake have been replaced with 4 6 magnitude rumbles in 36 hours, including the second 6.9 to strike this general area, this in the Solomon Islands. So much activity here this year already, and we also had a volcano erupt just a few hundred miles to the west. That's Mount Loken. The coronal holes are a moderate factor as well as the planets. The dark on the left is actually two separate openings with the southern negative hole facing Earth yesterday and the near-Earth influence from the incoming positive already beginning to stream past our planet. Somewhat complex one-two punch there. Got some solid links for you today. First is about a baby supernova, how they got the data, what they think it looked like up close. Light curves and solid info linked below. The top story is from Dawn, with a new view of the Ceres lights. Definitely something near to the surface, and definitely multiple sources, potentially dozens. We also have an interesting large-scale article on how galaxies regulate growth and destruction within themselves. And, last but not least, a nice star water principle. While exo-Earths are certain to exist, we will find orders of magnitude more habitable moons. In fact, a dozen moons in our own system are two-thirds water ice or more. This was a point in our star water series, the most watched on the website. These moons are where we are most likely to find life, advanced life, and a home someday in the future. Last link for you today is to the Xinhua coverage of the South China floods very much a major situation. In the Americas, we note a flow out of the west at cloud level coming up over Mexico and through to New England. But down at the surface, we see a convergence over Texas. The moisture coming from the Pacific is lit up above the collision zone and will be severe yet again tonight. In Europe, you have a bit of trouble seeing the flows, but if you look closely, please note a line from northern Africa up all the way to north of Scandinavia. The cloud line starts down there, comes up over Italy, and right through to the north. Lastly, we've got the same convergence to the southwest Pacific, cutting up from on top of New Zealand back across Australia once more. No denying how the convergence holds the cloud lines. Nine days left to pre-register for observing the frontier. Nine days left to lock in the lower membership price for life at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got a tutorial version of the current conditions, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.